In this short SQL Server tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate the insert statement. We're going to use the sample database that I created in a previous tutorial, Dr. Wolf's College Database. I have some simple structures, courses, faculty, and students. I'm going to work with the faculty table first. And what I like to do is I like to understand the structure before I create my insert statement and to craft it. And what I look at is, you know, what my primary key fields are. What I look at is whatever fields are required, uh, meaning that they're not null. So in my case of this entity, every field is required and my primary key is faculty ID. I wonder about the faculty ID because if the creator of the structure made this an identity column, that's going to matter to me. Uh, what it's going to matter to me is do I include it in my insert statement or not? Or if I need to include it, perhaps I need to uh, force a faculty number in for some reason, then do I need to write my statement a little bit differently? Now, one way I could do this, I could basically right click on my structure, go back into design uh, the same way we created it and look and see if that field was created that way. Uh, except I like to use SQL scripts and I like to share and teach how to use commands that are a little bit less known. Uh, before we had a cool product like uh, SSMS with all of these capabilities to have the GUI interface, uh, we would learn a lot of the built-in commands in SQL Server. And one command that always has stuck with me is called SP help. And if I do SP help in the name of my table, so TBL faculty, and if I run this, we're going to see structure information about that table. And of course, make sure your session is in the correct database before you run your command. Uh, so in case here, you know, I've already used my use command and I can check my drop down. Just a friendly reminder. If I run that statement by highlighting it and executing it, you'll see the structure information about faculty. And everything that we can see over on the left expanded, we can pretty much see here along with additional details. So you can see the nullable option, you can see the, the, um, the data type and the length, all of the same type of stuff, right? But what I'm going to key in on here is, is, is there an identity column? And it says there is. Faculty ID is the identity column. It's seeded with 100 with an increment of 1. What that means is it'll start with the first one I put in with 100 and each next one I put in will increment by 1. So to do the insert statement now, I know that I do not include the faculty ID, meaning that the database management system is going to automatically give it to me when I insert the rest of my data. So in this case, I'm going to do insert into TBL faculty. And what I'll do now is list all my fields that I'm going to have to fill. In this case, it's going to be all the fields. Now, you can take shortcuts and not list all your fields uh, in some cases of insert statements and I don't recommend it because when you take shortcuts it could hurt you later on meaning that the structure could change and you've assumed fields to be in a certain order and if you code that into applications or stored procedures it could cause things to break so by nature and by best practice always list your fields uh, that you're going to fill do not try to avoid doing that. You may run across some examples where people did not list the fields, but I can tell you from experience, anytime I did that early on in my career, it came back to haunt me later on. So take the time to type them out. You could also, another cool thing about this SP help, if you have a large table or a lot of fields, well, save yourself some time, right? You can just highlight all of those. And I could have hit control C and pasted them. And then I could have um, put commas after each one, etc. And, and just save myself from the typing. Another thing that I'm always cautious about here when I type my command in, you'll see some of my um, attributes, properties, or field names, whatever you like to call them, turn blue. What I do in those cases, because they're reserved words, I put square brackets around them uh, just to ensure that SQL Server knows we're talking about my actual 
attribute, not any intrinsic built-in names. Uh, you could do it around all fields, but by putting the square brackets around, and, and you'll see that when SQL Server used the um, script commands to script objects, you'll see SQL Server do that um, around them uh, very commonly. Uh, and I do it just out of habit around anything that turns blue as a reserved word. Uh, additionally, you'll see that, especially if you have anything with spaces in field names or tables or such, which I completely avoid, but sometimes you'll run into that in other people's systems. Uh, so once we have the insert line, we just do the values now that we're going to put in. And based on the data type depends how we have to structure these values. So anything that's a character data type, we're going to put apostrophes around it. Basically, they're strings of text. So first name in this case will be John. And the last name will be Doe. And just like in our insert line, we're going to separate each value with a comma. So they're going to be uh, data inside of quotation marks and separated each one with a comma. And then the address we'll say is 123 any street. And the city can be somewhere. State will say New York. And I'll make up a zip code of one. 3030. So if, as long as we have alignment, and that's the other thing to check here, because you'll get error messages when the number of fields here don't match the number of fields down here um, on your values line. And this is very common. Sometimes you'll forget uh, a field in your list of fields and you'll include it in your values and there won't be alignment. So you'll do an insert and it will fail because there's th the things do not line up. So count one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That, well, at least you'll have the same number of values as you have fields. And if that's in alignment, you should be okay as far as your insert goes. Again, calling attention to <clears throat> the fact that I did not put the actual faculty ID in because we know that's an identity. So this simple insert statement here, if I was to highlight it and execute it now, we should see it go in, right? And it says one row is affected. So um, that was successful. And now what we can do is I will comment this out so I don't accidentally run it again. If we do a select star from TBL faculty and I always verify my work. We want to make sure that that record is in the, the table. Now you might say to yourself, okay, well, I want to force a faculty ID in. And this happens from time to time. How do we get an actual number in faculty ID. Like what if we don't want it to be 101 for the next guy that gets created? Okay, maybe we don't agree that it should be an identity column or we need to force it to something else. Well, let's say I want to put in um, a faculty ID for the next person of 120. Okay, I'm going to show you an error message first. And the first thing I'm going to do is change John Doe to Jane Doe. And We'll leave everything else the same for simplicity's sake and sake of time. And what I'll show you here is I'm going to add the field faculty ID. And I'm going to do this and show you an error message because as new developers are learning, it's always good to see error messages and see what happens uh, or how to correct an error message. So let's say I want Jane to be, let's say, let's even do something even more random, 499. Okay. So we know we have alignment. I added one new field here and one new field here. So everything's structurally okay. So let's try to run this and let's see what happens. We're going to get an error message. This says that we can't explicitly put a value in the identity column for the faculty table. You'll see the table name message when identity insert is set to off. It kind of tells us in a little cryptic manner, and you'll see that with error messages if you're used to any other programming languages or in SQL. They're informative, but a bit cryptic, and we have to understand what it's trying to tell us. So it's telling us identity insert is set to off. Um, and what we have to do is set identity insert uh, to on before we can uh, run our command this way. And if we want to be successful, in in doing this, then what all we have to do is type the command set identity insert. And what we're going to do is specify our table TBL faculty. And we're going to specify the setting. 
of on. So what this will say is that we're going to force an identity value in here. And when we run this now, problem solved. Record went in no, with no challenge. And if we comment out the insert and the identity and we run our select statement, you're going to see that Jane Doe went in with 499. Okay, so now what happens if we go back and run our original statement that didn't have faculty ID in it? So let's manipulate it back one more time. And this time we're going to do Peter Paul. And Peter can live down the street, so he'll be at 1, 2, through one two four any street or one two five any street and he just happens to be their neighbor and he's also a faculty member we we're going to run this statement now and we'll let you watch, watch what happens now we got the inverse of the error right we left identity insert for table faculty to on so now it's giving us the error that is opposite of the previous error it's saying well it's on well you can't insert this information without the identity field being specified. Okay, so what we need to do here is we now basically need to take it from on to off. And if we run it now, the row can go in with no problem. And we'll do one more verification. And let's see what our data looks like. Peter went in at 500. Why did Peter go in at 500? because it was the next highest value uh, after 499. And when we looked at the structure with SP help, we saw that it would increment by one. We forced in the gap from 100 to 499. So 500 is where it would pick up next. So that's a good thing to know about identity columns and how to handle them in your insert statements. And if you ever need to force a value. Now I wanna show you just one more piece of some error messages. So let's say, we goof let's say we accidentally forget to type first name in our line here and i'll just add it back to a comment so we have it to paste back so what's the error message look like so this is what i've talked about troubleshooting your error messages always a good practice to learn so here's our error message in this case there are fewer columns in the insert statement than values specified in the values clause okay so this is our insert statement portion so what it's saying here is that there's less items here than there are here. And if we can confirm that, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, we either have something down here in values that doesn't belong, or we forgot something up here in, first, in, in this section, which we know that we took first name out of there. So if we put first name back in, obviously that statement would be fine again. The other error you could potentially see looks like this. And if you run it this way, now it's saying there's more columns in the insert statement than values in the values clause. So check it out. We know we have six up here and down here in the values line, we only have five. So the alignment isn't there, we get the error message. So those are your typical errors that you'll run into with your insert statements. Now you could potentially run into some data type errors with your values. Uh, but for the most part, regardless, uh, if you're inputting uh, values that are numeric or string values, as if you put them inside of quotation marks, you should be good. Now, another one here, I'll just give you one additional one. Uh, we'll put, it, we'll put um, let's change our name back to Karen here and Karen can live with Peter in this case. So we're gonna put that back, but let's check something out. I wanna show you one more error that's very common and it's a sizing issue. So we know that um, state can only handle two characters, but let's say we make a mistake and we type out New York. Okay, so we know again, we checked our data types, we know it's character, but it's only a size of two, but we didn't pay close attention. So we wrote our statement, we typed out the word New York. What does that error look like? you're going to see a truncation error. And this is where you get to look a little bit closer. So string or binary data would be truncated. It's basically indicating what table. 
again, my table of faculty, and then it tells me the column, and it might be more than one here if you're, if you're really off. In this case, it's only one. But what you'll see here is the column state, the trunk allocated value would be NE. The insert failed. It didn't actually put in. But what it's telling me the best I could do with this is only force NE in here uh, because we have, we're trying to put something in larger than what exists. That happens sometimes. Sometimes that leads to structure changes and table changes, and you need to make your fields bigger because your data over time has changed into something that you weren't expecting. Uh, but other times it's just because your data has not been prepped or cleaned properly. So if we were to fix that back to New York, our statement is valid once again, and we put Karen Paul in, and we verify Karen Paul, and we now have four faculty members inserted into our table for our college system. I hope you found this useful, especially pay close attention to the error messages that those are very common, especially if you're new. Uh, remember this SP help uh, command can be very useful. Again, just kind of show you if I was to let's let's do one last example here uh, and let's start it from scratch. Let's do SP help on TBL students. And you'll see the same similarities. I'll use SP help first in my tables, TBL students. And if I run this and you'll see the same thing, identity column, and then my column names, right? Uh, and you'll see that there's a, a nullable one here, faculty ID. So I'm going to leave that out currently, but just to save myself time, let me show you how that SP help is valuable. Just what I was mentioning earlier, insert into TBL students and there, I just pasted them all. I didn't have to type them, right? So what would I do next? Comma, comma, close the parenthesis, and just clean this up. I like my code to be readable and nicely formatted. Okay, so that's how you would use the SP help. Create that, create that line for that insert line pretty quick and painless, and then just a couple little other quirky things that I prefer to do, put my brackets around. Uh, and then finish off your values line. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope you found some cool tips and some best practices to utilize. i uh, like to see your comments below. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, share with others. Uh, also, you can reach out directly to me uh, through my website at professorwolf.com. Thank you and uh, have a great day.